All right, so uh, let me go ahead and start it. Can you hear me, all of you? Can you hear me? Good. So we talk about how to become a, an effective teacher. You know, as a resident doctor and even attending doctor, you always teach your student, you always teach your uh, men, your mentee. So let's go around and tell me what did you like teaching experience? Do you currently teaching medical students, resident intern or not? And uh, what is the best way? What's the most effective way to teach? Uh, let's go with you first, uh, Tu. Hello, Tu Trinh. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. So actually, um, yeah, actually, unfortunately, I didn't have much experience as a resident doctor because I left very early to Korea right after my graduation. So up to now, my teaching experience were limited when as a teaching assistant in the Department of Physiology. And my main duty at that time were to assist the student in order to help them during the lecture, lecturing time. And currently, I am working mostly in the laboratory and my work is, my teaching experience is uh, that I will show the medical student on how to perform the, um, simple, tec the simple techniques in the allergy as mm. an diagnostic tool. And so actually today I would rather be a listener <laughs> instead of speaking. And but from what I know, the most effective way in order to teach effectively, the most effective way for teaching is that we should have the two-way communication. So firstly, we give the student the most base, most important and basic in knowledge about one's topic. Mm -hmm. And after that, we should receive the feedback from the student and have a two-way discussion. So. After that time, we can assure that our teaching skill uh, will affect or not. So that's awesome. what I know. Thank you. Now, do you like it? You like teaching? Yeah, I like teaching a lot. Actually, from what I experienced, teaching helped me understand the problem more effectively. And mm -hmm. when I talk to my student, to my former student, I can also recognize something that I misunderstood or something that I skipped. And every time I know how to translate my knowledge better to other students. So I like it a lot. I see. Thank you very much. How about others? But um, let me tell you one thing. If you really want to become a really good doctor and you know a lot, actually teaching is the best way to keep up with your knowledge. Um, why I enjoy teaching so much, because this is the way that I can improve my knowledge every day. Like every day I see you guys, I see my resident, my students, and uh, I learned so much from this because every day there's a new question, there's a new study, uh, there's a new challenge, and that keep me up with what's happening in the field. All right, let's go around and say, uh, hey, Dr. Tung Mai, welcome. Okay, so can you share with us your teaching experience because you are clearly a teacher at uh, Jare Hospital, right? So what, what, what is going on? Why you, uh, what's the best way to, uh, to teach medical students in Vietnam? Um, hello, everybody. It's really uh, good to see all of you again. Um, uh, regarding Dr. Green questions, how can we teach medical students uh, well, it's really hard in Vietnam right now because the number of students is so large. Mm. And um, in fact, we don't have enough time to yeah, talk to each student, actually each participant. Uh, when the student comes to the hospital, it's usually like 20 to 30 students. Each time I have to uh, meet them, I have to talk to them. And the way we usually do in JRA Hospital, 
uh, they have to go and check the history. Uh, they have to do the what we call um, but then I don't know what or what is it English. And then that they will they will uh, discuss that with me. They will talk to me that uh, there's uh, three problems for problem that they they see and uh, why why they see a problem. What they have to deal with is what next what the the, the next things they need to do. Mm -hmm. and, and I will give some recommendation. Uh, and I think the best way for a student to study in Vietnam that they have to check some extra duty. Like some student like uh, want to follow my ship mm -hmm. and then they can oh. work with me. They can, uh, yeah, like, like private teachings, like they, yeah, oh. something like that. Very and, nice. And, yes. Yeah, that's right. I, I think the... Uh, yeah, there's a difference. Like where every time I have students in my service, there's only two or three students, two or three. And um, because we focus a lot and I give them feedback at least weekly. Like every week I sit down with them and say, hey, this is how you do, what's your goal? What is your to be specialty? Like what you like to be when you finish? Um, and then so the content feeding between me and the students and also with residents or intern, we have one or two, but we still have a big team. We have almost eight or nine people in one team. But uh, I think it's not compared to 30 people like you say, because it's very difficult to teach. All right. Thank you, uh, Tung Mai. So uh, let's go ahead and share with uh, Beth Nhi Hoang. What is your teaching experience? So um, I had two years working at the U university from the Thad University in uh -huh. the mental uh, department, mm -hmm. and um, so I so I uh, I, I share the the experience of not the teachers but the experience of the students because mm -hmm. when I was a student, I had a lot of unnecessary pressure. So, uh, I see. Yeah. So I think. Uh, so as um, as a teacher, I think one of the most important thing is that uh, we create um, um, uh, an environment where the students can communicate freely with the instructors mm -hmm. and don't make them feel. Uh, nervous or anything they have to prepare uh, like it's, we we have a lot of uh, defense mechanisms or something and mm -hmm. try to help the student overcome that and wow. uh, yeah well, so uh, let's move to one student to see what they think all right uh what do we have here um can or i don't know what is htc butterfly number two uh, Atlas, can you tell us your name? Hello, butterfly number two, ATC. Hi, hello, so sorry. Yeah. All right. What What is your name? Okay. Are you a student? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I, hear you. I am Chen Ngoc. I'm in student because I come here a little bit late, so, so I everyone is talking no that's okay we actually we just started too uh, are you a student yeah i am a student and maybe i understand the topic every all right so i think you're cutting up so that uh so guys next time make sure that if you have a computer access that will be better okay i can throw a computer access then, uh, okay, let's me move on to other. Okay. Um, one of my usual teaching method, we call it the sandwich method. I don't, not to my, I don't know if you use it in Vietnam, sandwich, because you don't have a lot of time when we walk in to see patients. Um, I, we do two minute teachings. My first question is, I usually ask my student, 
what do you think about this? So this is the first one you want, you like to evaluate where is your students? Because some of your students are very smart, they know a lot, and some of them are not so smart, um, or they're not up to the level of their classmate. So you ask them, what do you think about this? Why the patient have bleeding? Why the patient have shown up breath? The student will give you some idea, but, but can tell you a sense where he or she is, right? If the student know what's going on, so you can, okay, listen, or the student have no idea why the patient have a heart attack. Okay, then you have to go back even further. Okay, so what happening? So the first thing is to evaluate where is your students. And then the second, one, the student know something already, and you will ask one more question, what else going on? So beside the main diagnosis, what else? This is so crucial because in medicine, identify the main diagnosis and then the similar one will tell you how much that person knows, right? A lot of time, for example, if someone just tell you one thing, oh, this is an acute MI, and they don't think further like PE or something else, you may wonder why, but if a student can tell you, okay, this is likely a chest pain due to acute MI, however, could be PE, could be aortic dissections, something that dangerous can kill a patient immediately. So you, you can tell by first diagnosis and then the mimicker or the difference of diagnosis. So when they have that, uh, you confirm their knowledge. Now, and then you will tell the student, tell you about a patient. One of the things that over the year I found was you don't have to present a lot, a lengthy one. I don't like lengthy presentation. I don't know if you like this. Uh, Dr. Tung Mai, do you like somebody present a very lengthy presentation? No. Right, yeah. Not. Yes, because we, we practically we don't have time. So the, the shorter the presentation is, actually a, a better student is. Because for one line, someone can tell you, um, yes, Tom. Yes. So in one line, so someone can tell you what's going on rather than somebody just go around. So the next thing after that, if they have, or they tell you one or two lines, uh, you give them feedback immediately. Feedback or how you think, you can just give them in five, two seconds. Uh, you don't have to wait because if you wait by the end of the day, you almost forget it. If you wait by the end of the week, you completely forget it. If you wait by the end of the month and you look at their paper and you evaluate, I tell you, you don't remember anything, right? So the way that we teach here is we give an instant feedback, like at that moment, why you say a QMI without typical presentation of a chest pain or angina, pectoris. So those are the things that I give them feedback immediately. So after today, if you feed, give your student feedback, please do so. Do right now, immediately. It takes only two seconds or three seconds. And you can say either good or not good. I tend not to say bad. I just say, okay, there's a room to improve and those are good. And those are things that I like to improve. Um, because sometimes if we just, yes, go ahead, don't. Um, I have some questions that uh, when we, try to establish the goal for our student. It mm -hmm. should be we who establish that goal or it should be the student who choose their goals. We, because a lot of time, I like to be more proactive. And I, when we walk in and say, oh, my name is Dr. Tran. I am your teaching doctor today, attending today. Um, let's walk to see a patient and tell me about yourself. And the student will say, hey, I'm this uh, Amanda. I'm four years or third year, I'm second year. I'm going to this. And I look at, hey, Amanda, this a patient we want to see have abdominal pain. What's going on? What do you think bring the hospital, bring the patient to the hospital? And then Amanda will tell me, oh, look what it is. And then yes, at that time, I will create a role model between already. So when we walk in the patient, we have some talking already. And mm -hmm. I kind of have an idea how much Amanda know about the patient. Um, so, so those are the, the thing that I like to share with you, because if you create an, 
an active role first. And I know that for your case, it's you have thirty students. I cannot imagine if I do it with thirty, it's very difficult. However, if I see, I will try my best to to give feedback immediately. And let's go back to the sandwich method. So, what is sandwich? Sandwich means first of all, you give just a good thing about that person, okay? Um, and then you go in the middle, right? You say not so good, and then the last thing you say this is good. So, this is how you compliment people, right? So, think about it. It actually it's what most of the time, whenever you like to to say something to improve, you should we. People tend to go with a good thing first, and they like it. And they say, hey, Amanda, you did really well today when you talk about abdominal pain, and I like the way you present. It's short, give me enough information. However, I think there are a thing that I wish you to, to say or improve better. For example, when you talk about abdominal pain, uh, you did not mention about the what is the most dangerous condition in this particular age. For example, small bowel obstruction, and that can kill the patient immediately. So when we talk about that, um, you tell that, you see that good thing, not so good thing. And then the last line you say, but by the way, keep doing this, keep your present, uh, presentation short, and next time we will, I'm sure you will do better. And that's it. So it's not that a lot, you see, it's, it's very short, concise, and this is I do a lot when we walk in and when we will go back to our room, I finish my feedback. It is how it, and you will see that if you keep doing that, uh, it creates your student a habit because, um, and uh, before you leave or finish, you just say, Amanda, why don't you look up more on small bowel obstruction, a typical presentation for a younger age who have no major history in the past. What else can cause that? Right, and then of course she will look up. She will go up, and then, and next time if you see her again, you just remember, hey, did you look up? And then just kind of keep constant learning. Okay, and so those are the things that I I like you to you guys to uh, uh, think about it. Since many of you voted uh, this main section about teaching and learning, which is my main topic to my main interest, I think uh, from now on I would devote a lot of time to talk about that. Okay, how to become an effective teacher or learner for you guys, for you guys in Vietnam as a medical student, what is the best way to learn medicine? Uh, because it's too much. I'll be honest with you, you cannot learn everything in such amount of time. You have to have a way to learn more effective. Okay, let's go around again and say, okay, uh, Kim, welcome. Can you hear me, Kim? Yes, I hear you. Yes, hello everyone. Nice to see you again. Nice. I'm sorry because I'm late now. No, no, no. Uh, we we late too. Uh, actually, today we are short because um, I have something in my schedule. But Kim, uh, can you share with us what is your teaching experience uh, with students in Japan? Uh, are you teaching or assistant teaching? Uh, actually, unfortunately, currently I. I don't teach all the students in Japan because in our center, you know, my supervisor, he he's retired three years ago. Currently, he's just focused on the research. research. So I, I often do research at the research assistance, mm -hmm. not for the teaching. But mm -hmm. I have some experiments when I was in Vietnam because I, I Till now, I currently is a lecturer from the university. So uh, actually, I, I have no skills about the how to teach students. But day by day, I learn from the seniors and our pro professors yeah. about this. But I think the most important when we want to devote our career to teaching skills is, firstly, we love teaching. Mm -hmm. Because we we love to share our experiments, our knowledge to another people, especially for the student, the younger and mm -hmm. the juniors. Secondly, when we firstly when we have the love, the teaching love, after that we try to imitate or we try to learn from our seniors and our teachers. Secondly, is 
the hard working, I think hard working, not so hard working for our personal issues, but for the other people. When we hard working, we get more experiment, uh, experience, experiences, not only in clinical setting, but also uh, in the university. When, when we are working, we get more knowledge because I, I love your mention that uh, teaching is learning. Yeah, I very agree with your ideas. Yes. And when we learn, we are working, we learn hard, we get more knowledge and more experience, more skill to share with the other people. And I think this is the two very important things when a people want to come into the medical teaching uh, fields. So that's him. That's the, my experience. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, move to Tu. Uh, um, what is your experience? I, I, I know that you, I, not you will for sure. From your student, what is your perspective on teaching? Uh, who is the very effective teacher that you've seen so far? Um, hello. Yes. So my experience so far in college is I, I like the professor beside um, beside the knowledge in the book that provide like you know application in the field because it's easy to help me to kind of relate the concept in the book into a, the real life, and I also being um a peer mentor myself, so um I think a way the same which way you talk is um really good like it's actually applicable and help the help motivate the student to learn better and uh that's what i i observed in uh, my group you know um give them a feedback like thank you for their hard work first and then doing some reconstructive uh criticism and then like thank you for their hard work again and uh like motivate them and push them forward and that's a very uh, good way to active learning Thank you, uh, too. All right, so um, I said today we will be short and uh, I just have a couple, more, two minutes, three minutes, because I'm going to see his patient. But uh, i like to go around and say, anyone would like to share your opinion, raise your hand. Uh, but I thank you for your coming today because by doing this every week, you already create a habit of learning uh, medical English and I think in the future, we'll focus more on teaching and we'll share more interesting story about how to teach and how to become a more effective teacher. Um, like Dr. Tung say, and many of you say here, uh, teaching is one of the best way to learn. So I um, any more questions, uh, comment, uh, Dr. Tung Mai? Oh, uh, I, uh, I, I just, uh because you don't have much time, but I want to share something. Like yes. um, in Vietnam that I can divide it into like two, two group. One is from, for the student who is very, very large number. In the large number, we have to deal with a different way of teachings. And one is with the residents or postgraduate participant. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, yeah, we, I, I think that I encounter another problem talking with them. Sometimes I, I, I don't understand what, what they talk about. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, very interesting. that's really difficult for me as one. Um, so how uh, do you do with that? How did you do? <laughs> um, at first, I, I'm very confused. But then I realized that uh, my job is try to create a learning environment. Mm -hmm. I just uh, I try to make it into the topic and then we'll set a, a, some time for the person. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, buy me some time for more reading, something <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. I, I like it, I like your... Uh, well, Dr. Tung Mai, we'll, we'll talk about uh, difficult student next time, okay? I think this is a very interesting topic because I do have some experience with very difficult, I call it difficult students or difficult patient. Like you, you don't really want to teach or you, you just don't want to talk because whenever you try to teach, they just like, oh my God, and then. So uh, we'll talk about difficult students next time, okay? And, and how not to be. Nhi, you have a question? 
I know. Uh, okay. So I just see somebody raise your hand. Uh, just raise your hand or no? Uh, I think Thảo, yes. Go ahead, Thảo. Uh, à, em chưa có câu hỏi gì ạ. Em mới chỉ vào và đang nghe mọi người thảo luận về vấn đề học về dạy tiếng Anh. Rồi. Em <cười> giờ đang học tiếng Anh chuyên ngành nhưng chưa có câu hỏi gì cả. Okay. That's good, Thảo. Just keep listening. And then by osmosis, uh, you, you will learn it. Okay, go ahead, uh, Tu. Yeah, hello. Yeah, before ending the discussion, I would like to share some experience in Korea and in the hospital setting. And, you know, in Korea, we have some, in the hospital, we have some levels of the doctors. So resident doctors, uh, no, first medical student, then resident doctor, internship, fellowship, and the professor. So we don't have much number of students in the hospital in Korea, actually. But usually one student, they will follow one specific doctors, like fellowship or fellow doctors or the intern doctors. And they will, and the that supervisor will guide them directly in on every patient and every medical records. So that's why I think it's the best way to have the resident doctor to improve their skill. Or it would be bad, it could be a fight for every medical student. So that's what I want to share. Yeah, Thank you. I know that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Kim, last uh, comments before we uh, close it and then we meet again next week. Go ahead, Kim. Yes, I'm so, sorry, just a little reminding because today I very, very pleased to invite a new friend to our meetings, but it, unfortunately she cannot log into the zoom.us because I, I suddenly know her because he, her currently a pharmacy, pharmacy student in Canada mm -hmm. And she was a pharmacist in Vietnam. So she moved to Canada and continued to study ph pharmacy. Her English is very good. And she liked to devote her skill to help the Vietnamese student, not only in medical English, but also for the general English. So I have discussed. Yes. Yeah, OK. All right, guys. I, 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 I said, OK. I, I will see you later and send you about the detail. But yeah. a new a new assistant, I think a new assistant for VND. I want to introduce her to with you and all VNDs. Thank you. In the future, yeah. See you guys and thank you and see you next week. Okay, we'll talk about difficult student. Okay, thank you.